In this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can set up PyHole on a Synology NAS. Now I have a video on this already, it was done in DSM-6, but I've received a lot of questions about it lately and I thought that I could explain certain things a little better. My last video basically gave two different options on how you can set it up, but I didn't explain exactly why you should pick one over the other. So I thought that I'm just gonna go through, set it up on DSM-7 here and explain why I like to set it up this way. So PyHole is a DNS sinkhole, and what that means is it basically allows you to set up PyHole as a DNS server, have all of your devices use it, and then all of the ads that it catches will automatically be blocked. Now that's at the DNS level it's blocked. This tutorial will utilize a Mac VLAN network interface, and it's done that way so that you don't run into any port conflicts. You can set it up with the host network interface, and in the written instructions, I have exactly how you can do that, but I like to use a Mac VLAN network interface because that allows me to have a separate IP address for my DNS server, and it also avoids any port conflicts that would happen on the NAS. So the first thing that you have to do is open up File Station, and under the Docker folder, you have to create a subfolder named PyHole, and then you're gonna go inside of that, and you're gonna create a subfolder named dnsmask.d and PyHole. If you're missing that Docker folder, it's probably because you don't have Docker installed. So make sure that Docker is installed. And then we're gonna move on to the Mac VLAN network interface setup. So you have to make sure that you can SSH into your Synology NAS. So you can open up the control panel, select terminal and SNMP, and make sure that enable SSH service is selected. That will allow you to SSH into your NAS. And we have to do that just to create the Mac VLAN network interface. After that, we can switch back to the uh, GUI and set everything else up. So after that's done, we're gonna SSH into our NAS. I have a video, I'll leave a pop-up for that now if you aren't sure how to do that. But then we're gonna navigate to the PyHole folder that we created earlier. And the only thing you have to be aware of here is that you have to navigate to the uh, volume that Docker is installed on. For most people, it's gonna be volume one, but if for whatever reason you install Docker on volume two or three, you have to make sure that you navigate to that folder. When we're inside of there, we're gonna create a resolve.conf file. Now that's done so that we can add our name servers. This is something that I could never get working without this. I'm not saying it's mandatory for everybody. There are plenty of people that haven't had to do this, but in my opinion, this is the safest way that you could do it. So after you do that, you're gonna to have to go inside of it and you're gonna to have to paste in two addresses there. It's gonna be name server, 127.0.0.1, and that's the local host, and name server 8.8.8.8, .8 .8 and that's Google's public DNS server. After that's done, you're going to save that file, and then you have to run the command ifconfig. Now inside of here, you should see the network interface that your Synology NAS's IP address is. So what you're looking for is your Synology NAS's IP address, and then there's gonna be a network interface name next to it. So you have to make sure that you use that network interface name and the next command. And the next command that we're gonna run is what's going to actually create our Mac VLAN network interface. So in the written instructions, I have the exact command that you have to run, but you have to modify some specific parameters here. In the parent section, you have to use the exact same network interface name that you found in the IF command that we ran in the last step. After that, you have to substitute your subnet. So for me, I'm using 10.2.0.0. For you, it could be 192.168.1. The best thing you could do is take your Synology NAS's IP address and it'll be the first three sets of digits that you have. So if it's 192.168.1.220, for example, your subnet that you're using is 192.168.1.0. In the gateway, it's basically gonna be the exact same thing as the subnet, except for it's gonna be .1 as opposed to .0 slash 24. And then the IP range, we're gonna use a slash 32 address, and this is gonna be the IP address of our PyHole network. So what I'm typing here is 10.2.1.198 slash 32. That means that after this network is created and PyHole is successfully created, I will access PyHole using that IP address. After you run that command, the network interface will be successfully created and you can exit out of here, and then we're gonna move on to the Synology NAS setup. Now this next step is optional, and I think that this is what caused a lot of confusion in the last video. In the last video, I created a PyHole bridge network interface, and the way that you can do that is you can open up Docker, you can select network, and then you can add a new network there. 
And this bridge interface is not necessary if you do not want communication between your Synology NAS and your Pi Hole container. So that means if you intend on replacing the DNS server on your router to use this Pi Hole IP address, you do not have to set this up. The exception there is that if you want to use uh, OpenVPN on your Synology NAS and you also want to use Pi Hole, you should set this up. So the only thing that you have to be aware of here is that it should be a different subnet than you're currently using. So for me, I'm going to set it as 192.168.10.0 slash 24. The IP range will be 192.168.10.2 slash 32. And the gateway will be 192.168.10.1. Like I said, if you're not going to use OpenVPN and you're also not looking to set the NASA's DNS server to be the Pi Hole container, this step is not necessary. You can move on to the next step. However, if you want either of those, you will have to set up this network interface. And after you do it, you have to be aware that all communications between the NAS device and the container will be used through this bridge IP address. So if you're trying to use the DNS server for Pi Hole and set it statically inside of the NAS, you have to use the IP address 192.168.10.2. Now, after that's done, you can select registry and you can search for Pi Hole and download the latest Pi Hole image. As soon as it's downloaded, you can double click it to create a new container. And inside of there, you're going to see the network interfaces that you have created already. So you should see at minimum a Mac VLAN network interface. And if you created a bridge network interface, you'll see that there as well. If you created both, you'll check both of them off. If you only created the Mac VLAN network interface, you'll only select that. After you do that, you can move on to the next step and then you can give your container a name. Make sure you select enable auto restart and then you're gonna select advanced settings. Now in the environment variables, you're gonna create four total environment variables. The first will be web password and that's what you're gonna to use to access the admin portal. The next will be DNS mask underscore listening, and that'll be set to local. The third will be virtual underscore host, and that's set to pie hole. And the fourth is server IP, and you'll change that to be the Mac VLAN network interfaces IP address. In my example in this video, it's 10.2.0.198. In the written instructions, if you're following along in the written instructions, it'll be 192.168.1.198 that I'm using there, and that's just because when I created those instructions, I was using a different local subnet. After that, you can save that, and then you can select next, and what you're gonna have to do is view the port settings here. Now, this can all stay as default. The reason this can stay as default is because we're using the Mac VLAN network interface, so there are no port conflicts. We don't have to change anything here. Select next, and then you have to modify the volume settings. So we're gonna add three separate volumes. The first is going to be a folder mapped to that DNS mask.d folder. The mount path will be forward slash etc forward slash DNS mask.d. The next folder will be the pie hole folder. It'll be forward slash etc slash pie hole. And then the third will be a file and it's gonna to point to that resolve.com file and it's gonna be forward slash etc forward slash resolve.com. As soon as you do that, you can select next and then you can select done and the pie hole container will be created. Now you can access your pie hole container by navigating to the Mac VLAN network interfaces IP address forward slash admin. As soon as you get there, you should be brought to pie hole. Now you should be able to log in. Now, as soon as you log in, you can go through and create local DNS records. You can set different blacklists. There's tons and tons of things you can do inside of pie hole. The final thing I want to point out is the DNS configuration. This step is where I get a lot of questions. The DNS configuration on your router, if you set it on your router, it's done this way so that all of the devices that are using DHCP will use this DNS server. So basically what that means is if you go and you're on any specific device and you check the device that the DNS server is using, what you'll see is that for most people, especially if you're using DHCP, it's gonna to point to your router. If it's set to your router and you change the DNS server in your router, that means that all of your devices will now use this DNS server. So this is gonna be different for everybody depending on the type of router that you're using but you have to make sure that you use the specific DNS server with the Mac VLAN network interface. 
I can't really show this because every single router will be different. But after you do that, assuming that it's set up properly, when you navigate to a website, if you go back to Pi-hole, you should see that certain DNS queries are starting to go through Pi-hole, and that will mean that ads are slowly getting blocked. Now, I'm hoping that this video helped you guys out. It is a pretty complex thing, and if you set your DNS servers and your internet stops working, it's not that your internet stopped working, it's that you're most likely not getting DNS resolution. So go back to your router, set it to be the same values that it was prior to that, or just set it to use the automatic values, and everything will go back to normal. I want to point out, because I've received this question a lot, Pi-hole is not a very easy thing to set up for a lot of people. This is you know intermediate to advanced level stuff, especially when you start setting up DNS servers. You can get it working pretty easily, especially if you follow various tutorials online. However, understanding how it works is something that I recommend everybody does because if you understand how it works, if you run into any problems, you should be able to fix them on your own. So like I said, I'm hoping that this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.